Hello there, a very good evening to you and welcome to The Pinken Show, our dedicated Canaries shenanigans that's been accused of white noise since 2015. Uh, I am Michael Bailey, we are live here for the first time at the delightful Departure Lounge on Prince of Wales Road in the centre of Norwich. I've swapped a pineapple juice for a flat white. There's so many stereotypical points that I've just made there, but we're going to breeze straight over them. Uh, and for the next 30 minutes or so, we will discuss that glorious night in Leeds and look ahead to the most curious East Anglian derby ever. Plus, there's everything in between, including a current look at the championship picture and the return of Flip the Bird. Paddy's really looking forward to that one. Um, uh, we will do that in the company of tonight's guests, who are my esteemed colleague, Eastern Daily Press Chief at Norwich City Correspondent, Paddy Davitt, and a man who, like me, can appreciate Raymond Vord and Matthew Rush as much as Mark Libra and Jonathan Johansson. It's Rewind Norwich City's Jamie Marison. Gentlemen, welcome. How are you both? You all right? Very well, my man. Very well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm lapping up the, the scenery. Jamie, how are you? You well? Yeah, good, thank you. It's, it's pretty nice in here. It's a shame they don't have a beer, but... There we are. <laughs> no, really disappointed there. Just um, bear in mind Jim Van Wyck, who we had on, and we made him sit outside in a car park next to a sinkhole. Uh, it's still a, a very famous uh, night. Uh, first up, we should say, uh, apologies, we are late. We had a few technical uh, difficulties getting um, going in terms of live, way beyond our control, by the way, and certainly Dan and Tony's. Um, but there we are. We are firing now, which is good. And uh, we are live in various places. Um, hopefully, Pinken uh, Facebook page, although on a slightly different feed, uh, Twitter, Periscope, and YouTube, um, which means you can get in touch with us and you can do that on whatever you want be it thoughts on leads tim cruel winding everyone up paul lambert's return to carrow road and especially we'd like to know the last time one of your heroes surprised you now we thought about uh, going down maybe the last time they let you down but thought that might be a little bit disappointing or negative so uh, therefore the last time your heroes surprised you um you can get all those through to us on um, whichever way you want the pink and facebook page uh, youtube chat box uh, you can reply to the Pink and Twitter and Periscope feeds and streams, and I'll do my best to keep track of all those as we go on. Bird Table says, what's going on? Yeah, sorry, we are a little bit uh, late with that. Uh, Melon1963 is already in with, I agree, ignore Lambert, ignoring capital letters, so making the point. Uh, and uh, Tony Miles, please do not tempt fate by jeering at Lambert. We are better than that. Exclamation mark. Loads to talk about. That's just on YouTube. Keep all those messages coming in. Uh, right, let's crack on then, shall we? Uh, I don't know. Well, uh, well done, Dan. It's Onel Hernandez. Would you like to do the honours, Jamie? Just make sure it's on the table. It's very loud. We don't want to ruin any dogs hearing uh, out there listening. Uh, Onel Hernandez is here. Wesley Moulahan is here. It's time for this week's Norwich City headlines. <laughs> oh, he's gone for it. He's gone big. Marching on together. Leaders Leeds replaced at the summit as Norwich City teach them a lesson at Elland Road that their fans are still struggling to come to terms with. Out of a choice of August or the weekend, I know which game I would rather win. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario. Franchit shines bright win, but it was his January performances that have earned him the PFA Fans Player of the Month award with 45% of the vote. Top stuff Mario. At this rate, we are massive. We'll be trending again soon. Heizam, Heizam, Heizaman. That doesn't work. Heizaman. Uh, Philip Heizer joins City on deadline day. Um, sorry, I couldn't let that one slip last week. Uh, he may well come into consideration when form and injuries allow and may yet prove a nice little nudge in the right direction for Norwich. And finally. Blue, 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 blue. Uh, yes, Ipswich lost again on Saturday. Paul Lambert hasn't walked out. January is over. It's the derby this weekend, and it promises to be pretty weird. <coughs> Which is, as you probably get the sense, the narrative I am pushing on Sunday's game ahead of it. Uh, away we go then. Uh, let's, we've got to start with, start with Leeds, obviously, gentlemen. Uh, hard to say what was more pleasing, the result or the performance? Both. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We just speaking to Jamie there in the hiatus before we came back online, <laughs> to use a diplomatic term. But and, and Jamie was saying, yeah, it was probably as good as we've seen under Farker. I've written along the same line since. Um, that's a high benchmark, particularly going into this weekend's affair. Um, you know, I mean, it's subsequently come out, hasn't it? You spoke to Tim Krull, Daniel himself said that they just got a sense in the build-up, the, the days, the week before, that all the players really sensed this was an opportunity. Daniel said at no point was it, let's just go there, perform, maybe get a result, win, win. And they, boy, did they do that. So 
for me, you have to be hugely confident going into this weekend's game. I mean, we, we kind of sort of said about their record against the top six was a little bit sketchy going into the game, but it is a characteristic of this Norwich side. They do keep rising to the challenges, don't they, Jamie? Definitely, yeah. I think the performances as well. We've, we've, we've won quite ropely in a few in a few games and we've rarely looked comfortable. I think only Birmingham at home a few weeks ago we've looked comfortable but this this performance against Leeds is, is, is like I say it's as good as any uh, performance under FARC um, but what a time of the season as well to start performing like that against the top sides. We, we always knew that if we could got, get through the game against Sheffield United, Leeds and the one coming up see where we are after those performances and, and those results um, yeah and we're right in there definitely I mean people were saying as long as we're in the top three come the end of these three games that would be amazing so the fact that Norwich are actually top at this point is is quite remarkable um, Leeds fans I, we are going to talk about it a little bit because some taking taking it well some a little bit more in conspiracy mode with everything that's gone on but it is an interesting dynamic with them Paddy isn't it because I think you've spoken to most people and they just said they're the best side Norwich have played this season I mean they probably still are even even on Saturday night that was a hell of a game against a really tough opposition so they're in a curious situation now aren't they with their sort of wobble that they're having having and, and how they deal with that mentally well, absolutely. I mean, that's four league defeats in the last six. Um, Bielsa, post-match, I was, I was in the room talking about, A, defensively, they're, they're looking very leaky now compared to the start of the season, notably when they came to Carrow Road. Uh, and at the top end of the pitch, not scoring enough goals for the chances they create. And we saw both facets ruthless, ruthlessly exploited by Norwich. So, no, I would be seriously concerned if I'm a Leeds fan because they look like a team going backwards and conversely, Sheffield United are coming up on the rails. So... Yeah, I think of those two, Norwich looked the better bet for me. I mean, in fairness, we've now seen, as, as Paddy mentioned, Sheffield United, Leeds and West Brom in, in very recent weeks. Obviously, Middlesbrough game will, will come up later. But uh, what have you made of those three? Because it, it has sort of tightened the pack up a lot, hasn't it, in terms of the top two? I definitely think we were lucky to get a point at West Brom um, earlier in January. I think we sort of struggled with injuries those few games. I think Steepman was out that game. Um, we were lucky. It is similar to the Brentford game as well. We, we, we sort of go through these stages where we aren't performing that well, but we did manage to get a couple of points out of those games. And at the time, you weren't really sure how those points were going to play out in terms of the, you know, the league table come, um, come February. But I think now, definitely, um, Sheffield United looked a very, very solid side. I think they were just four. four it's, Birmingham came to Carrow Road and played 4-4-2 and they looked really weak I thought quite all over the pitch especially their midfield but Sheffield United came and they just looked really tough all over the pitch and we did we, we felt a little bit disappointed after that after that point I think but when we look back on that now it is you know a really good point against a good side it's probably because of the fact that Norwich led twice and you were like well in this situation you could kick on really interesting dynamic for Norwich fans now probably maybe specifically I know we've got a really big game coming up of course this weekend but but going on I mean they are in a wonderful position Paddy and that, that's something that the fans will have to kind of come to terms with I suppose and the players yeah and the players um, because the expectation will switch Jamie's right you know you go to West Brom you go to Leeds and as much as internally it sounded like that they believed they could get a result I don't think there was any real pressure from outside the camp that won't be the case now from here on in you know the next three games Ipswich are home Preston away Bolton away there will be an expectancy Norwich go and minimum six to seven points out of that and that'll be the way between now and the end of the season and I've said it r routinely since the Leeds game it isn't Leeds, West Brom, Sheffield, Middlesbrough that, that will dictate whether Norwich finish in the top two it's can they go to a Preston can they go to a Bolton and, and pick up points uh, remember get, keep getting uh, bringing your messages in we do want to hear loads all, all manner of subjects but also uh, when a hero has surprised you because um, that's what we're asking this week um, what else have we got on YouTube I'll stick with David McKenzie good evening at last fellas yeah, sorry David uh, I, I think we should ignore Lambert he would love it to be all about him um, something that might, I know, might come up in his press conference who knows uh, Mellon uh, 1963 enjoyed Mr Bailey jumping around when the third went in on Saturday I don't think I, was, I wasn't jumping I was on good behaviour wasn't I on Saturday yeah, if you'd have jumped around where we were sat, you might have f fell over the side of the gantry. And uh, yeah, so no, 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 it was pretty understated. It wasn't Millwall proportions. No. <laughs> uh, BB 25 AM. Uh, let's enjoy Sunday and be confident in the way we've played most of the season, player for player. We are undoubtedly the better team. 
uh, Steve Richards, Mario Player of the Month. At least we got a good sub in Mr. Leitner. And Damar Facey, I hope Ipswich turn you over on Saturday. Damar, who do you support? I would like to know. Right, uh, so Saturday, uh, we sent Tony, this is good, this, uh, to make his own way to Leeds and back in a day. I mean, he got the Sunday off, so it wasn't all bad. Tony's nodding. Um, and fortunately, he did manage to squirrel himself in a car with Norwich City fans uh, who were happy to let us into their Canary supporting world. Still love it. It's strange. Don't do it because I have to, because of the run, do it because I still really enjoy it. My name's Stephen, been following Norwich ever since I was uh, a lot smaller than what I am now. Uh, I used to go with my dad in the old Barclay, stand on my little stool and uh, been supporting them ever since really. Took Tristan to his first game, uh, it was the proudest day of my life when he walked the City, City kit for the first time one Christmas and uh, he's been uh, humming away ever since. Spend time with my dad and, uh, and being out with him and stuff. I don't know what I'd do without him. So. My name's Mark. I've um, been following Norwich since I was seven years old. So, best part now, 38 years. Started going to home games with my dad and my granddad um, and then just carried on from there. Started to go to away when I was 12 years old, really, I suppose. I'm Debs. Um, supporting since I was about six years old. First went with my dad. I haven't missed a game since 1983. It's the enjoyment of the day, out with friends, um, seeing the team hopefully win. Over the years, there's been ups, there's been downs, as I'm sure everyone knows. Sometimes it's it gets to you. You know, bad performances, you're a bit put off for a, a few hours, but then on the way home from games, you know, you, you think about it and basically ready to go the next time. You work shifts like I have done most of, most of my career as you have to find out who your, who your friends are at work or do a shift swap for you. So uh, uh, there's a lot of bribery involved. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's a case you have to get used to it unfortunately and uh, it's not good but it's part and parcel of being a home and away support really. I think we all now accept that TV runs English football and it's frustrating when you get your fixture list in June. You set about planning where you need to take perhaps half a day off work, things like that. And then a month beforehand, something else is moved. Another way day with noise, you never know what to expect sometimes, but the way we've been playing, I've got a good feeling about today. Sun's out, yellow shirts will be blazing in the sun, so we're looking good. Hopefully Pookie will do it, uh, get the winner. The similar, sort of just a stick back four strong. Overused in football, but first goal is going to be crucial. If we get it, hopefully we can push on from there. It is the unexpected that keeps you going. There's nothing ever guaranteed with Norwich, we know that. So when you get results, potentially like we could here today, that's why we do it. Yeah, we're not going to it thinking, oh my God, it's Leeds, therefore we'll never get a result.
how awful oh no that's how that one uh, goes we'll bring you a few of those over the course of the show of course um in terms of the, just maybe wrapping up the last bits of of the the leeds games uh, the leeds game paddy if i may um who was your hero at ellen road i mean you did your ratings i'm sure and it was a fun one but in i mean in terms of scoring that that would have been a it would have been a very high game to score i'm sure yeah well i i'm pretty generous because uh, i don't really place a lot of store by player ratings so oh, no. it's a five minute job if i'm brutally honest but uh and i do like to put a multiplier in and when you perform as we've discussed to that level collectively yeah it was pretty across the board i think mario's slightly above because he, you know in the key moments he was there but hero i think on the podcast earlier in the week i said ben godfrey just just because i felt that was for me the first performance of a ben godfrey in central defense where you started to think well hang on those sound bites from Farker early in the season about mm, defensive midfielder can be decent at this level but as a center back he could go anywhere and you just felt that wasn't a young lad trying to make his way. That was a guy who, uh, it was a statement performance. It was, you know, I'm here, I belong in this atmosphere and on this stage. Um, and, and let's see more of that this weekend because um, it was such a mature performance, I thought. It's a curious one with the youngsters because each time a new one comes in, you think, well, OK, but they won't be given the full faith and that at some point they'll have to be dipped out. And actually, again, Ben Ben Godfrey has proven himself in the same way that Max Aarons and Jamal Lewis have done. Who, who, who sort of really excelled for you because there were so many good performances weren't there on Saturday I, th- I think everyone was, was faultless in that Leeds performance um, like you say Mario but I'm, I'm really enjoying Steeperman this season I think in that number 10 role he just carries the ball so well forward and for a, for a player that couldn't even get in his what seemed like his preferred position last season he didn't never really made that left back his own or, or left midfield he just he just breaks up the play he's got so much energy about him as well um, and who would have thought that he'd been a number 10 at the start of the season? He, you know, we, We've been crying out for a number 10, I think, since Chris Hutman was in charge, really. I mean, we tried it with Pritchard, but Pritchard, you know, he, he, can't, he doesn't have that sort of um, fitness level that, that, that Stephenman did. And, um, yeah, just really enjoying his play this season. Um, one very quick question. Uh, obviously, a brilliant away trip, as Tony enjoyed himself and, and the guys did. Um, best away win since Wembley? Is that what we're saying? I, th- I think so. I think let's see how this season goes first. I think the Leeds game is still fresh in our mind. We're all quite excited about it still. Um, there aren't probably any many. There aren't many that come close to that for, under Fark or, or since Wembley. We rarely had any had any in the Premier League. I think we won at United, didn't we, in the Premier League season, and we were in a good good reign of form then. But against a really good side in Leeds, I think yeah, it, it's, it's certainly up there. Think. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. I can't think of anything, the whole context of what was at stake to rival that in the last two, three seasons. Brilliant. OK, let's get a couple of questions on Periscope, if I may. Um, SLJ Leonard says this set of players w- don't know what they're capable of because they are a mix of young and foreign, but they now have immense belief, so anything is possible. Double smiley face emoji could work there. Uh, and Josh Roper throws a little question in. Here's one for you, Paddy. Chances of Farker's contract renewal announced before the Ipswich game? Question mark. Zero. Zero percent. That's not even a chance, even for Dumb and Dumber. Uh, right, keep the points coming in. Um, we'll have a look on, on Facebook as well in a bit. Uh, but the one thing I did want to also touch on was, of course, the January transfer window um, finished after last week's show. One signing to deal with, which was, of course, the signing of Philip Heiser from uh, Dynamo Dresden. Uh, he is in the building, I guess. He is probably available after his first week of training for this weekend, but it's probably going to be one that will take a little while to embed in, and we know he's one that they want to bring in for the summer anyway, so they've kind of brought it forward. Absolutely. Um, Looks a good, astute piece piece of business, because I think one of the few areas in that squad that looked a bit threadbare was left-back. We had that issue prior to, I think it was Sheffield Wednesday away, when Jamal Lewis was a bit of an injury doubt, and, and ultimately what happened that day was we had two academy lads who've never been anywhere near the first team since on the bench um, but I don't think it's any coincidence Jamal Lewis was very good I thought at Leeds and he was also very good I felt the previous week against Sheffield United so as much as it's another body in a key area of the squad I think it might just drive Jamal's performance level up as well because he knows if he dips this guy I think is capable of coming in and, and hitting the ground pretty quickly because he's not a young lad he was he 27 I think played a lot of games in the second tier in Germany um, 
physically looking at him, you went and had a chat with McColney. Doesn't look like that side of the championship would, would be too much of an issue for him. So, yeah, I think it's a win-win. And, and obviously the money they paid for him, nominal fee. So um, it makes a lot of sense. Daniel Farkas certainly eulogising about this guy. And um, they haven't got too much wrong on the recruitment front so far in the last two or three windows. So could be a good bit of business. In- indeed. And that, that's a fair point. I mean, Norwich have done sort of... Uh, they've had to take a little bit of a gamble with some of their recruitment and there's obviously some that haven't worked out but generally I mean the, most of this success is built on how um, I guess the vision of what they're doing in terms of their recruitment and how things have sort of knitted into place I think Paddy alluded to it there but a lot of the players that have been signed have, have not gone straight into the team at all they've really sort of embedded in very very gradually and I don't and I think this is going to be another slow burner and Heiser probably won't be in the squad within the next few games if if not at all towards until the end of the season um unless you know we get injuries but um yeah it, se- it seems quite promising and it is that recruitment policy that Fark and Weber are looking for so you know we're, we're starting to begin to trust it now whereas maybe in the start of the season we were a little bit unsure about it but now when it's going well and you start recruiting those sort of players it's, it's, it's exciting indeed let's get some of your messages on the Facebook feed shall we Miles Hopkins evening all bring on the derby biggest game of the season and we've got all the confidence in the world let's enjoy it that's the way indeed um, Mark Robson evening everyone hopefully we can carry our momentum on against Ipswich must not underestimate them though that's very true and um, Dean Wright why are people asking about Cruel FA said Monday no further action they have indeed I haven't seen anyone ask about Cruel but yep um, Tim Cruel is available do, do you enjoy the end of uh, the full time scenes Paddy when you saw the uh, saw them back the old uh, pushing and shoving Patrick Bamford back in his uh, yeah. habitat of ruckus that's, that's more um, what's the phrase I'll be diplomatic that's more heart that he showed when he was in an orange shirt ah. that's for sure we'll leave that one there um, and there's a couple more that I was going to bring um, no let's leave them there because we'll come back to them keep them coming in uh, of course over on the Facebook page much appreciated uh, I think it is now time for another one of these I was Mr. Holt, wasn't it, Dan? Yeah, yeah. Tony's nodding, everyone's nodding, that's all good. Right, okay, uh, I reckon we go straight into this. Ready, Dan? He's not ready. He is ready. Yes, that's right, is Flip the Bird. It's the bit these two gentlemen have most definitely not been looking forward to. Um, now, it is, of course, the game that continues to confound limited expectations. Last time out, Ryan Livermore made everyone feel better with a debut too, while Ed Cousins Lake showed the uh, pen is indeed mightier than the board with a mediocre four. Uh, tonight, Paddy has the chance to show what he's got after a tricky debut last season. We were a little bit harsh because we, we cut the time, so it's a bit of our fault. And uh, Jamie makes his flip the bird bow tonight. Uh, both these boys opted against practicing um, before we went on air, it must be said, and we did have an extra 25 minutes, so you know, you might be ruining that one. Uh, in short, the guys have 30 seconds to flip as many bar mats as possible, adding one to their flipping pile with each successful one handed catch. Both scores will find their way onto our leaderboard, while the winner tonight will get a much prized selfie with Wesley Moulihan, which is actually, we will all take a selfie with Wesley Moulihan. Tony is ready for that. Are you gents ready? Yeah, Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, you have 30, 30 seconds. seconds, so don't, ha- don't hurry, uh, hang around. Are you ready, Dan? Yeah, go on three. Two, one, go. And this is a bit where I get to show my limited commentating skills as well. It's a, it's a, it's a calm start. Um, I know Paddy's a man who's uh, not easily flustered. It is Jamie's unique talent but, um, and, and technique, but it, it does seem to be working. Um, Paddy's off the mark there with a nice little... Stewart's inquiry. Well, on well we, I'm not watching properly. Dan will yeah, review the footage but a week later. Paddy's happy with that. He's talking to me while he's doing it as well. He's yeah. very happy now. He's much happier. I'm not giving you that one, Jamie. That was, that was controversial. That, much better from Pad. Pad's got the hang of this. Watch out, everyone. And Jamie's just failed with the last one there, but that's okay. There's two reasonable piles there. What we got there? Four and four on oh, a good no, day. That was that one. Was there? I five. missed the five, mate. Four. I it took was, four. Okay. Well, it was on the pile, so you have it. Oh, you okay. have it. You I claim it. Five. five. 
How many have you got there, though? Five. That's what counts. Five and a five. Five all gents. Shake hands. What a what a magnanimous, um, wonderful evening of flip the bed entertainment that was. I don't know where everyone ends up on the. Um, but you you're going to be quite you're happy with that. Aren't you, Pat? Listen, that's the highlight of my week. <laughs> wow. I think that probably deserves a sting. Should we do a sting? Do a sting, Dan. Twelve. Wonderful. Twelve. 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 Top of this leaderboard. Twelve. Twelve possible. is the top of the leaderboard. But you know, it's, it's all right. These people spent. Steve Cook spent twelve years in a pub growing up, learning how to do that, um, in the hope that some um, poor YouTube TV show would end up um, make it into a competition. So it's all fun. Um, as we get to the trouble to get these guys on, it's always nice to spend a bit of QT with them, which is what we're going to do now. Paddy, we're going to start with you. Um, now, Cov's your club as we know so uh, I mean do you actually get time to follow them given you're sort of here there with Norwich every week no not so much now mate as, as, as you know <coughs> you spend a lot of time with me at various football grounds but it's normally Norwich we're there to watch I think trying to think now off the top of my head the league one playoff final last year was the only time I saw them last season a bit of a glory hunter now to be brutally honest is that and the JPT so would well, I be right saying on to that. Oh, the last okay. two times I've seen them live yeah they're both at Wembley in fact my now wife thinks that rather deludedly basically Coventry watching is every 12 months we go to Wembley and they win a game of football <laughs> I've had been the last 10 years well, has, well the last two times we went but, um, <laughs> and the time before that she was at the playoff final in 2015 so yeah probably set too high a bar on that one in terms of her football watching but um, it's fair to say you go through the results and have a quick look to make sure you know how they've got to on to depress though. myself yeah 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 I would, uh, yeah <laughs> it's um, well obviously ex Canary Mark Robbins doing a sterling job but uh, we'd be here rather longer than the length of this show if we went into the uh, ownership issues and the fans are raging against the, the owners and um, I mean now they're literally weeks away from being evicted again so it could be another Northampton type situation um, so it's a pretty toxic mix really but on the pitch probably if they're lucky they can just keep a playoff push going but they'll probably fall a bit too short of it so yeah it's not good not good at the minute so it does probably make you think with my professional hat on how good it is here at this football club at the minute and, and what these fans because it, that unity in terms of from the inside the club from the top to the bottom and the fan base totally absent at Coventry so it's sad to see but what can you do indeed that's a nice context to have really I think it's sort of seven eight years since you had been in the EDP top top job think is it as long think, as that I is think it so. I don't know I'm going by what you this told me bit, a little this while. is your life mate I you know it's all right, it's right. Be, well uh, that's right but I, well, I, your job how much has it changed do you think or what's been the biggest change the one thing that's changed from maybe when you you know would start doing that in 2012 or whatever yeah, well I mean in, in a word just to a the digital explosion really I mean as we're here tonight and the lines you know from when I started it was probably the beginnings of moving out from a paper product to a website and then obviously now it's every platform you can think of digitally so just that extra demands and the different types of content you have to produce obviously what we used to do or my predecessors it was a very much a print based operation and uh, and now it's that's just one spoke in the wheel isn't it so yeah I think just the volume of what we produce and the different types of content looks like we've got a Got a gate crusher, mate. Oh, is there Will Buckley who's watching us in a nice way? He's giving us a nice wave. There he is, a the man. He's probably going to come in. I don't know why he's talking to us, but there we go. I'll give him a thumbs up and wish him on his way. Uh, and of course, Paddy, now you get to sit next to a stuffed cow. So um, this is yeah. how much the job has uh, clearly evolved. Um, Jamie, let's come on to you, shall we? Because um, for those who don't know, I mean, I'm guessing most people will know about it, but just, just tell everyone, Rewind Norwich City, well, what is it? So Rewind Norwich City is an <coughs> online blog and social media account that predominantly posts uh, nostalgic footage from Norwich City's past. So over the years I've accumulated quite a lot of old VHSs and DVDs and this has been over sort of a 20, 25 year period. Um, so about 18 months ago I started a Twitter account and started sharing some of these old clips and people seem to quite like them but I try not to post um, like the classic goals because you could just go to YouTube for those ones I try and find some of the more obscure ones ones that people might have forgotten about or just have no recollection of um, yeah and share those and yeah it's quite a good engagement I think yeah indeed you have to find the collection of Raid Award crosses because I was always convinced he was a really good crosser of the ball but I don't know if that footage exists anywhere um, are you surprised how well it's gone down from from that initial concept you had um, I'm not sure. I just think it's it's a sort of thing that I would follow, and I was and initially I set it up because I wanted to see some more of these clips. So I started that account and started following it myself. Um, 
I'm, I guess I'm not that surprised that people quite like it, but I think some of the more obscure ones, it's quite nice to see that those do get a lot of interaction and, and people just, you know, just can't remember, um, can't remember some of them. But then I'm always really surprised that some people can remember exactly where they are at, you know, a very insignificant moment of Norwich City's past, which is remarkable, really. It is indeed. And the other thing you've been doing now, is it on FIFA? Or no, which guy? I you know I've got kids. I've got time. Computer. Yeah, it's just it's just a stupid thing where you no, can. No, it's not. It's brilliant because you're playing out a whole season for everyone to follow. Yeah, so it's uh, Pro Evolution 2018. You can change the option file, which means you play with um, the old classic Premier League teams from 93, 94. So even Coventry are in there with their <laughs> very, even then pads. Very disgusting. Um, yeah, kit there. Oh. Which, one, um, which one? Which one are you on about? Oh. Um, not the brown one. With Peugeot no, on the front? Yeah, it might have been Peugeot, oh, yeah, with, uh, with Mickey Quinn, because he, in, in the game, he is about four foot wide. In, he in, filled yeah, that yeah. kit, it's fair to say. That, that was lifelike. <laughs> so, yeah, I've just been doing a playthrough of that. I started at Christmas time when I had a bit more time. Now I'm sort of stumbling to a bit of an end, so, but I thought I'd share the experience, and some people seem to like it. So. I love it. Um, so what is the plan? Is it is it a hobby? Is it more? Is it just keep it ticking on? I, I think it's difficult with sharing that sort of footage which you completely don't have ownership over. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you've said that. <laughs> so um, at the minute, yeah, it's just a hobby and um, doing things like this, you know, essentially I'm just a geek sharing footage, but the fact that you're asking me on the Pink Show tonight is uh, it, it, quite good. So yeah, I will, we'll see where it goes. It's a good man. You're a good man, Jamie. Keep it up. Um, you can find it all, just search Rewind Norwich City and I imagine that's going to take you where it is. Some great stuff. Keep up the good work. Likewise, Paddy, keep up the good work. Likewise, Paddy. Michael. <laughs> Very kind. Uh, right, okay. Um, our Derby preview will be on uh, its way shortly. Until then, how about we have uh, another one of those, Dan? Well, uh, who, who was that we just had, by the way? Who was Steve Bruce. Legend. There we go, yeah. Steve Bruce, Norwich City legend. <laughs> Dan doesn't know, but he, he, he likes MMA. Don't worry about that. Uh, so I've, I'm um, joined by someone who's come a very long way, not specifically for the show, it has to be <laughs> said. But um, you are here as well, which is very nice. Um, Stephanie, is Yes. It? Stephanie, thanks for joining us. Uh, now, um, tell us a little bit about your, back, your background, because you're a Norwich City fan, um, but you uh, don't live in Norwich at the moment. No, I've come from Uruguay. But I was born in the United States, studied at UEA, worked in Norwich for a while, a year in Oxford, still a Norwich City fan, then moved to Chile for five years, lived in Uruguay just over two years. So I've come back, saw Sheffield United a couple of weeks ago, and I will be at the Derby, and I fly back to Uruguay Monday. See, this, this is amazing. So um, that's amazing that you're still a Norwich City fan. <laughs> I mean, uh, they are your team. Is that yes, fair to say? Yes, that is absolutely fair to say. And that's just from being here at the UEA, effectively, for a couple of years? Uh, well, no, I actually lived in Norwich for 12 years. Oh, 12 years? Yeah. That's OK, <laughs> that was brilliant. Um, how easy is it to follow in, in, um, in Uruguay? Your minute by minutes are valuable okay. for all overseas fans. Brilliant. But when I was in Chile, when they were in the Premier League, it was easier because in Argentina, you get a few Premier League matches yeah. live. But okay. Championship, no. Now, um, and I can't remember who, I think it was uh, Vaughan yes. Grigg has been in touch. Thanks, Vaughan, for flagging this all up. You have seen Lionel Messi in the flesh a couple of times for Argentina Twice. as well. Yes, Chile versus Argentina and Uruguay versus Argentina. So, is he as good as Wes in the flesh? The two matches I saw, they weren't his best performances. I, 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 I saw him in the flesh once for Barcelona, uh, Ronaldinho got sent off after nine minutes so that screwed that experience for me but there we go they still won one nil in the dogged rear guard action just what you want to see at the uh, at the new camp so you went to Sheffield United game yes um, what was the game you saw before that when was the last game before that you'd have seen uh, last February I came to Middlesbrough on the 3rd of February last okay, year so that's quite right so that was a win yes so that's good so you haven't had to wait ages for a win or anything no. so that's good <laughs> and you're at the derby on Sunday I am and indeed. Now, how, how many derbies have you seen in the flesh 
This is my first. Oh, <laughs> how much are you looking forward to it as an experience? Yeah, I've, I've planned my travel. I normally I finish in Oxford at the end of my trip, but I went to Oxford last week so I could be back here for the weekend. I'm loving this dedication. This is fantastic. <laughs> um, and in terms of the team at the moment, what are you enjoying about it most? Or is there a player that sort of um, you're looking forward to seeing just tomorrow? Just everything. Sunday? But I did have a question. Will Tim Closer be fit oh. for Sunday? Tim Closer fam? Yes. That's understandable. Pad, what do you reckon? Well, will he get in? I don't think he will get in, no. I don't think he will get in. It, will he be fit? Probably too soon, I think. I think when we spoke to Daniel last week, he basically said both him and Moritz possibly back in training this week, but I think maybe the following week is a bit closer. Sorry, so definitely. But he might, you know, he might be on the bench and then he's warming up. Where are he sitting in the ground? Do you know? Uh, no, I'm not sure. I would have to ask Vaughan. Okay, there you go. Vaughan, send us a quick message somewhere and I'll try and, I'll try and see it. Um, well, I hope you have a great time. Enjoy it. Try and look out for Tony around okay. the game and he'll, he'll, um, he'll film you because that's what he does okay. uh, in a nice way. Um, so that's all good. Stay with us for the rest of the show. Of course. We'll do that brilliant stuff. Okay, well, uh, let's move it on, shall we, to the uh, championship, which is, of course, in full flow at the weekend. So here is the current picture. Derby were held at Alec Neal's dogged Preston while Martin O'Neill's renaissance soon, renaissance soon ended at Forest. Blackburn was stung at the Bees, Hull and Bristol City marched on and Ipswich lost at the death in Steve Bruce's first official game as Owls boss. The Blades followed up their Norfolk point with victory while Borough stunned West Brom before stumbling out of the FA Cup at Newport last night. So the table has a clear shape to it these days. Swansea drop back into the bottom half while Ipswich's plight may look fairly similar um, and may have looked fairly similar for a number of weeks. The gaps above Rotherham mean that in reality it's starting to look like three from four for the drop. Uh, remember when people were saying if Norwich could stay in the top three during this tricky one they'd have a chance? Well they're back on the summit albeit they could be third come kickoff against Ipswich on Sunday. Bristol City are now in the top six at Derby's expense. It's now ten points between Norwich and seventh albeit there are games in hand at play which could yet liven up the automatic promotion chase dramatically. And this weekend is a tasty one too. Sheffield United kick it off at Villa Park on Friday night before Leeds head to Middlesbrough on Saturday lunchtime. Bristol City will hope for a win while Derby host Hull before West Brom head to Stoke for the late kickoff or before Sunday lunchtime's East Anglian Derby. And we kind of touched on it, haven't we? That I guess the picture at the top, it could change quite a lot if some of the teams win their games in hand because that would concertina it quite a bit. Yeah, or, although conversely there was that Saturday before last when Norwich did what they needed to against Birmingham on the Friday night and then it, seemingly every other team dropped points or failed to get any points and you couldn't rule that out. I'm looking at the fixtures in front of me. Sheffield United at Aston Villa Friday night. Well, I know Villa aren't pulling up any trees but that's still a very difficult fixture and then obviously the eye-catching one Saturday early afternoon kick-off Middlesbrough leads. Well, you wouldn't say with any certainty you could call that and then the late kick-off West Brom at Stoke. Stoke strange side you know they're trying to get going into that new manager aren't they so it's not con inconceivable that all three of the nearest two Norwich drop points rather than they all cash in and then Norwich as you rightly said potentially are third going into Sunday's game so yeah I guess when we'll hear it from Farker it's the cliche you just Norwich has got to focus on what they can control and that's getting the better of Ipswich and then what will be will be but but ultimately could be another pivotal weekend absolutely I mean it does feel like we're now saying it's two from five yeah I think so and um, they, they, there's there's sides like Bristol City that are coming into the mix a little bit picking up a bit of form and I mean to be honest I'm surprised where where Villa are and Derby are now I look at it um, but yeah going into going to these rung of fixtures Sheffield United will be buoyed by their victory last week and getting a point at Norwich which is which was a good point for them um, but yeah I think I think Sheffield United are probably our, our biggest concern. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to get out at um, Villa Park on on Friday night, but yeah, like I said, we could be third. But if we can concentrate on doing our on our thing on on Sunday, then there shouldn't be any problems. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the one thing I did want to touch on that we haven't mentioned so far, uh, Nelson Oliveira. We of course wish him all the best after a pretty horrific incident with with Tyrone Mings, much like um, with Tim Cool. No further action from from the FA. I mean. I, it's hard to talk about the incident, of course, because a lot's been flying around and only Tyrone himself will know what happened, but it's pretty awful to watch. I mean, it's, they, those things don't happen very often, no. do they, Pat? Thankfully, yeah, it was a shocking incident and we've all seen the social media footage of Nelson's face and uh, it sounds like the surgery's gone as well as could hope and yeah. we'll see how long he is before he gets back on the pitch, but traumatic for the guy, really. Um, 
because you'd hoped he would go there and he'd already got off the mark, hadn't he? He scored a penalty, I think, on his first game. So, yeah, best laid plans and all that. But in terms of the, the FA action or lack of, then ultimately, I guess, it's very hard to prove intent, isn't it, ultimately? You know, the pictures don't do Mings any favours, but um, ultimately, I don't see how you can... You know, suggest that that was a deliberate act. So, unfortunately, yeah, in terms of uh, any punishment, it's not going to happen. But that's by the by. All you hope is that Nelson recovers quickly and can hopefully get back on the pitch before the end of the season. Right, bang on, brilliant stuff. Um, have we got one more of our derby heroes left? We have. They're nodding. Let's have that, shall we? Signing off with a true legend. Okay, uh, let's move our chat on to Derby Day, uh, shall we? Good old Wes, lovely to see him. Um, uh, so, I, I mean, I keep peddling that this is going to be a weird Derby. I, mean, I guess mainly because there's either loads riding on it or, you know, the two teams are both fighting for the same thing or there's not a lot riding on it and it's just the one thing for them to cling on to. I've never known a gap between the two clubs like this when they've actually had to face each other, Paddy. So it's a, it's a remarkable dynamic, really. Absolutely. Well, I mean, none more so than who's going to be in the away dugout. Um, don't look it. Don't look beyond that. Who, who on earth would have forecast when he was, as I wrote earlier this week, you know, taking the applaudits on the balcony of City Hall, 2011, having led Norwich to the Premier League. What mad individual would have forecast that? Not that many more years onwards, he'd be coming back with Ipswich. But there you go. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, that you touched on the debate earlier, Michael. There's, there's a lot of. Uh, do you acknowledge his presence? Do you give him the stick that maybe you feel that he deserves for crossing the East Anglian divide? Or do you ignore him? Because ultimately he, he probably will want that siege mentality, us against them, because that's what fueled Norwich's rise under him. So my own personal opinion is, yeah, that don't acknowledge him at all. You know, this is about um, separating out the Derby scenario and the, and the bragging rights and Paul Lambert. It's about three points. We've just looked at the table. We've discussed it. Three points for Norwich's goal, which is getting into the Premier League. Difficult, I know, maybe for fans to detach themselves from that, but really don't make it about Lambert this weekend. What do you reckon, Stephanie? He was quite successful, wasn't he, here? Paul Lambert? He was, <laughs> yes, but uh, hopefully not on Sunday. No, indeed. I mean, are you, are you, do you remember that period when he was in charge and how it not was? Not very well, but just no promotion... Always remember the promotion, yes. Yeah, he's there. there was two of those bad boys. What, what, what do you reckon, Jamie? I mean, because I know what football fans are like. They will be desperate to make the point when he comes out on the pitch. But you almost sense, well, if you just wait until maybe things start going well on the pitch, then ends your moment. I think I think you've just yeah got to ignore him. I think when we played at Aston Villa a few seasons ago in the League Cup, he came here, and we and a lot of the fans did make it all about him, didn't they? And he didn't he didn't leave on the best of terms at all. Um, but and, and, and we got defeated quite heavily that game. But And then more recently, when he returned with Wolves, I don't think anyone had a care in the world that he was manager of Wolves. Then everyone had kind of forgotten about him. And um, I think we managed to win that without even really acknowledging him at all. So it's a little bit different now. He's manager at Ipswich. I myself, personally, I'm not one to get involved at the start of a football match, I think. It, it kind of depends how it goes. And, you know, if, if, if he's given it the big end during the game then it's going to be hard to sort of ignore him but let's just concentrate on the football but a lot, a lot, a lot of our players haven't got that association with Lambert at all anyway so that's that's they're just going to do the talking on the pitch I guess there's not a single one of them who was around I mean Alex Tetty longest serving player and, and he was a, he was Chris Hewton's first signing so that that's kind of the way that goes um you've got a date tomorrow haven't you with him well I don't know it's just it's not just me and him I want to put that out there no uh yeah we're going to pop down Cross the border, go and see his pre-match press conference. So, uh, I'm sure we'll get a warm reception. It's nice of him to let you in. Um, so that's all good. Uh, there's a couple of other messages here. Um, by the way, Demar Facey has uh, said that um, you may remember he met, posted a message at the start uh, saying that Ipswich turn over Norwich on Saturday. He got the day wrong, by the way, Demar. Um, uh, the best team in the land. He says he supports Leeds United in capital letters. I'm, I'm glad you got through the white noise to send that message. Um, 
And uh, there was a lovely message. You'll like this one, uh, Jamie. 21 Jiffy. Hi to Jamie. Massive fan of what he does. Three exclamation marks. That's a friend of mine, so I appreciate that. <laughs> might, might, yeah, it's all good. Uh, loads more uh, messages uh, too. Um, Josh Webb says, thanks for the response. Uh, by sounds of Paddy reply, it seems there's a contract plan. This will be for Daniel Farker. Contract plan? Do you think with Daniel? Do I look like Stuart Webber? <laughs> I like that that was what you deduced from your answer, which was that there was zero chance. Well, <laughs> flippancy aside, clearly there is a plan. And uh, and I think both are on the same page when it comes to what that plan is. But is there a contract signed and sealed? Probably not as we sit here, but I wouldn't panic unduly. No panic, no panic. Um, uh, lots of love for the Departure Lounge on Facebook. It is a lovely place and we're very nice to be here. We're planning to be here on a um, regular basis along with the Woolpack and wherever else will uh, let us wait and strays in for a for Wednesday evening. Craig Brown says Aston Villa will go and win against Sheffield United. I think we'll probably take that result the way um, things are going. And uh, there was another one that I wanted to read here, which you can never find when you want to, because that's the way these swings work. Um, and I haven't found it yet. So we will move on from that and instead have a look at your guys' 11s, um, which, of course, we like to stick these guys in um, in the shoes of Daniel Farker and tell us uh, who they would pick in the dugout on sa on Sunday. Um, now, as I've repeatedly said, this feature doesn't really work when everything's going well. So let's rattle through them. Who's we're going to have first, um, Dan? Paddy. Paddy, yours first. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Same again. That's it. <laughs> Jamie, let's have a look at Jamie's. Dan, you got that? You got Jamie's up? Yep. What what are you going to go for, Jamie? It's got to be the same team against Leeds, yeah. hasn't it? Fair dues. Which says a lot for the continuity that. Actually, most of the changes have come down from necessity and not through Daniel Farker changing it. I mean, he's almost someone who doesn't tinker with 11 unless he's forced into a change now. Well, uh, yeah, and, you, and I'm looking no further than Godfrey Zimmerman. There's been opportunities in this last period where Closer might have been available or Hanley was available. Not a bit of it. For him, Zimmerman, he's spoken it recently that he was his most consistent defender all season, in his opinion. Godfrey has shown so much faith and I think we're starting to see the, the, the reward uh, so that's, as you rightly say, his mindset. He will give players chances. If they take those chances, they will stay in this side. Yeah, bang on indeed. Um, Jamie, the, I think there's a proper plan in place for how the Barclays going to look on Sunday, by the way. And clearly, there's a lot being said about uh, the money from the programme. Scarfs are on sale. If you haven't got a scarf, get a scarf. Um, and, and lots of money there being raised for what they're planning to do and how the Barclays will look for both Sunday and going forward. It's a brilliant effort, isn't it, that the guys will be putting into that. Yeah, definitely. The uh, Barclay End, is it Barclay and Norwich and Alongcom Norwich are doing a terrific job. I think, myself included, I think when you know when it's not going very well at a football club and you see these guys, um, you know, trying to get an atmosphere going, they were under so much criticism initially, weren't they? Um, but when you actually start seeing that they're putting in so much hard work to make it happen, to go into the club meetings, and I think they were campaigning for um, safe standing as well. Um, and then there's performances on the pitch as well. You start to really appreciate the work that they're all doing because you know they're doing it because they love it more than anything. They're not doing it for personal gain at all. And just on the game on Sunday, Paddy, uh, this Ipswich side, they're bottom of the league, they're cut adrift. They, they look pretty awful on pretty much all stats. I mean, are they actually that bad? Are they, are they, are they really that much of a write-off? In terms of their personnel, just taking out Paul Lambert maybe from it from, from a second. We know there's a couple of injury doubts, of course. Yeah, I mean, the reality is I don't I don't pay a lot of attention to what they're doing in terms of their players and, and you know the names, one or two of the names, but yeah, I think they are. I think, what are we now, 29, 30 games in? If you get to that point of the championship season and you're bottom and, as you rightly said, when we looked at the table, I think they're to get above Rotherham, they're sort of 12 points adrift with an, a massively inferior goal difference. Now, that isn't all Lambert store. Obviously, Paul Hurst was, was there for the first part of the season, but you have to draw the conclusion that they are heading to League One at a rate of knots and, and that's irrespective of the manager, that's the group of players. So, yeah, but as I say, with all that known and obvious, does it mean Norwich will turn up and just roll them over? No, because that's the nature of a derby, isn't it? How often do you hear the cliche, the form goes out the window, the league table goes out the window? Well, 
for Norwich's sakes. Let's hope that isn't the case this Sunday. But um, yeah, they they look uh, they look a very poor outfit. And the league table for me doesn't lie. Indeed. Okay. Uh, a couple of quick messages on Facebook. Adrian Gowling. Huge respect to come over from Uruguay for the football. <laughs> well done, Stephanie. Take that one. Um, and uh, Jason Taylor says, good morning from the Gold Coast. I imagine it's a bit warmer there than it is uh, here. Uh, Matthew Johnson goes for a 1-1 or a 2-1 with the uh, hands over eyes. And I don't know which way he's gone there. Um, um and that's Matthew Johnson getting in. So we'll get the score predictions from them in a moment. Uh, Matthew, Stephanie, would you change the side? Would you have Tim closer in if he was fit? I get the impression you would. If he was fit, but he would probably need a few weeks to get back into the rhythm of things. That's fair enough. Well, bide, bide your time, bide your time. Anyone you're particularly looking forward to seeing play? Although you have of course, seen them play against Sheffield um, United as well. Wendy, Pookie, maybe Vrancic as well. PFA fans player of the month <laughs> of course uh, brilliant stuff okay well that just leads um, key man and predictions from you two then please if I may who's your key man for Sunday's game and then your predictions key man Rancic because if he has the game he had against Leeds Norwich will win end off for me Buendia um, one of the most exciting players aside from James Madison over the, the past few years he just looks tricky and on his day he's you know, he, he'll be able to change a game. Prediction, I think we'll have a few squeaky bum moments. I don't think we're going to have it all our way at all. But I'm going to go for 3-1, so comfortable in the end. 2-0 Norwich. Two Stephanie? 3-1 uh, as well. 3-1 three three one one. as well. I'm sort of sticking up. I've got 1-0 in my head, which would be really awkward. Norwich win, obviously. Uh, right, um, that is us done, I think, for uh, the Pink and Show this week. Remember, you can catch up with uh, tonight's edition and all our superb Norwich City coverage on all platforms, including the Pink and app, but first and foremost, pinkin.com. Uh, I'll be there at Carrow Road with Paddy, with Dave Freezer, and of course with Tony on Sunday, and Stephanie will be there as well. Um, and Jamie, you're there? I'm there. Where are you sitting? Um, City stand. Love it. Well, near us. Not far from you at all, actually. Uh, we'll say hello then. We'll make sure we do that. Uh, so uh, make sure you check out our uh, big build up team news live and behind the scenes coverage, reaction, and analysis. If you see us around, please do say hello. Remember, it's a Sunday, 12 a.m. p.m. midday, 12 midday. <laughs> kickoff it's been a long day uh norris city are at preston next week so uh, there's no show next wednesday but given our logistical situation on the day after we might be able to throw in a pink and show on tour valentine's day special <laughs> you never know watch this space tony's buying candles uh, in the meantime uh, a big thank you to our guests tonight to stephanie thank you for joining us enjoy the game on sunday right, i will thank you thank you for having me oh, our pleasure thank, fingers crossed for the result uh, to jamie and uh, paddy of course gents thank you so much thank you, thank you very much uh, to the uh, departure lounge what a lovely setup look forward to coming back again uh, and to the crew which is of course to dan and to tony this week Tony's loving, looking lovingly at the lights. Uh, and of course, uh, to you guys and girls for watching and getting involved. Uh, it really does make a, a brilliant difference and we really appreciate your time. Uh, until next time, uh, here's to the least Derby-ish Derby in the world where the form book is delivered, read thoroughly and produces a lovely home win. All the rest is just white noise. Good night. <laughs>